Well, now let's work through the complete procedure to create the flag change sub VI. This is a sub VI that looks for a change in state of a Boolean signal. In particular, this save image flag, save image is generated back here in the update ports. When you press the button, that is coupled into the data highway back here, then we read that value. And that is supposed to trigger in addition to the front panel action button, either one of those will trigger this task to save the image to the flash drive. Now, if you press the button for any length of time, you will continually be saving images out to the flash drive. I only want to save one at a time. So that means we need to look for uh, invoking the task only when you first press the button. And that's what this VI will accomplish for us. And again, I'm going through the entire beginning to end process of creating this VI. And I encourage you to follow along. Feel free to pause the video as needed and duplicate what I have going here. I'm going to call, call the input to my sub VI flag and the output. I'm going to have two. One now set, meaning that the flag is has just gone from false to true. And then now clear means that it has just gone from true to false. And the point of these outputs is that they only go active for one uh, cycle, that is, or one call to the sub VI. Now the heart of this VI is the feedback node located right here. The feedback node keeps track of the previous value of its input. So I apply my Boolean signal, that is the flag signal, apply that to the feedback node. The output of the feedback node says what was the, the value of that flag the last time that the sub VI was run. So this sub VI is able to keep track of the past history this way. I'll set up a little bit of Boolean logic here. We look at the present value of the flag, look at the past value of the flag, but inverted version of that. And if those two are both true, that is, if the current value of the flag is true and the previous value was not true, then we say the flag has just just been set. So the out, output now set is enabled. By default, this initializes to um, false, but I'll go ahead and explicitly make that known. All right, we have a similar kind of idea for now clear. Just need to change the logic a little bit. Now we say, look at the present value and negate it, and then look at the past value. And it's, it's really kind of like the previous one, but just the, the sense is inverted. So we say, if the flag was set and has now just become not set, then we say that the flag has just become cleared, now clear. Now again, both of these outputs will only be active for one call to the sub VI. Repeated calls to the sub VI, um, generally these are always going to be low. So they only go active on that change of state. I'll call the name of the VI flag underscore change. Draw your attention back to our LabVIEW project and you'll see that the VI has automatically been added to the project hierarchy. Next, we need to give a custom icon to make this a little bit easier to recognize on our block diagram. I'll start out with some text. Let's call this flag and then change. I'm going to clear the existing graphics. And you can adjust 
things like whether or not the text is centered and so on. It's kind of nice style if you can have words plus icon kind of getting both types of information display going at the same time. So in in the uh, as shipped version of graphics or glyphs as they're called, you can insert something that might be useful, like a little flag in this case. We've got the icon drawn. Now we need to wire in the inputs and the outputs. All right, so we've got the icon completely done at this point. We have the inputs and outputs wired on the VI. Now I'm doing one last very important step. Press Control I, select the execution category, and then choose pre-allocated clone re-entrant execution. This is a very critical step. If you forget this and you place more than one of these VIs on the subdiagram, um, it won't work. It won't work at all. The reason being is that each VI needs to maintain its own state of previous history. And so when you place more than one of these VIs at a time, each one needs to have its own record of the past. All right, so I connect that in by scooting this OR gate over a little bit. I take my save image flag, pass that through my flag change, and then I can use either now set or now clear. And again, this only goes active the moment that the flag changes state.